Hallelujah. You carry me when some carry their girl. You feed me love when some feed their girl. Jesus, you fought for me when some fight for their girl. Jesus, you know they take me blue. You know they take me blue. I say, you carry me when some carry their girl. Jesus, you find me love. When some feed their girl, hey, you fight for me. When some fight for their girl, Jesus, you know they take me please. Father, I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. You are half and omega. We worship you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, we give.
choir help me sing. Thank you, Father. Lord, we are grateful. chapter 2 verse 14 looking at this scripture gives me a whole lot of joy 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 he said now thanks be unto God which always caused us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge in every place thanks be unto God which always not sometimes not almost all the times. He said, always caused us to triumph. That means, before the battle even come to you, you have already been declared a winner. How many divine champions do we have in here? I'd like you to say, my father, my father. Say, my father, my father. I decree an end to all of my life battles in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to please pray that prayer. Father, I decree an end. I am not just a champion. I am a divine champion. He said, thanks be unto God, which always cause us to triumph. Which always cause us to triumph. Which always cause us to triumph. I am not a loser. I am a champion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I decree in the name of Jesus, all of my life battles, I command you to come to an end. By fire in the name of Jesus, all of my life battles, I command you to come to an end. In the name of Jesus, this morning I decree by the authority in the word, thanks be unto God, which always caused us to triumph. In the name of Jesus, an end has come to that affliction. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. The battles of January did not overshadow you. The battle of February came and the Lord saw you through. This month of March, any battle the enemy has kept for you, God that made you to scale through in January, we ensure that you will have victory without a fight. In the name of Jesus, say, my father, my father, any battle in the month of March, I decree in the name of Jesus, I overcome you by the power in the world. Are you praying? Any battle the enemy has kept for me in the, in the days of this month, Every day in the month of March, I decree by the power in the word of God, I overcome. In the first week of March, I overcome. In the second week of March, I am declared a winner. In the third week of March, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. In the fourth week of March, no power of the enemy will come near my dwelling. I speak the word of faith into the month of March. In the name of Jesus, I am declared a winner. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. The word of God is the antidote for all of Satan's affliction. When a man has understanding of what is written, he gains mastery of all the situations of life. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Yea, our God, little children, and you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How many of you know that Jesus lives inside of you? How many of you know that the champion, the great one, lives on your inside? Say, my father, my father, 
I declare in the name of Jesus, any battle the enemy is bringing my way, I have overcome before the fight. In the name of Jesus, declare over your family, over your business, over your health, you will not spend the rest of this month in the hospital. In the name of Jesus, greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. There is power in the name. This month is March. I stand upon this exalted altar to decree you are marching into glory in the name of Jesus. This month is March. And the meaning of March is to go forward. The meaning of mass is to change level. I speak prophetically over your life. Those that are trusting God for a life partner, you are marching into your husband's house in the name of Jesus. Anyone that the enemy has kept down with sickness, you are marching out of sickness in the name of Jesus. Numbers chapter 14, 28, say unto them, as truly as I live, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. What are the things you want to experience in this month of March? I give you one minute to begin to speak. Father, this month, I march into favor. This month, I march into wealth. This month, I march into breakthrough. This month, I march into fruitfulness. This month, I march into relevance. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to talk to God. Whatsoever you say, you can have it. Whatsoever you say, God can give it to you. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Lord, I decree this month, I am marching into global relevance. This month, I am marching into an unprecedented favor. This month, I am marching into great spiritual exploit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Eternal Father, we thank you because you are good. Thank you because you did not give us into the hands of our enemies in January. They came, they fought, but you did not hand us over to them. Baba, we exalt your majesty. This month we know, because you have always caused us to triumph in Christ Jesus, we decree that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you are proposed to do in this service. No one is permitted to go home the way they came. For all our online viewers, if they can shout a living amen, let their testimony break the news in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We declare the service open in the name of the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost. If you know you are a divine champion, jam your hands together and shout hallelujah. Projects are ongoing at the new arena of the road to Shimawa. The new arena. Project size is 25 square kilometers huge. And the arena size is 3 kilometers by 3 kilometers. The largest auditorium in the world. 7 minutes drive from the old auditorium. 10 million seating capacity for 10 million persons at a time. With the state of the art equipment and modern technology. Parts of the project already completed are 3 major roads connecting the old arena to the new arena. 6 major entrances. Of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Asheshi, 5 kilometers, Christ Embassy Junction, 3 kilometers, and 2 major roads from Ikorodu via Shimawa and from Ogijo, amongst others. Over 1,000 toilets and showers completed at the new parameters and 500 toilets under construction. The seating area is 100% completed with roofing, while concrete flooring is ongoing. Car parks G, VIP, Shimawa, Odofi, Ogijo, and Oloparo are currently in use. The new 48 Suits International guest house has just been completed plus ample accommodation in the old arena tea and wi-fi is installed in the old and the new arena to keep you connected at all times our ongoing railway connection is negotiated at Ogijo on lagos calabar axis don't be left out in the building of the new arena to support the ongoing projects you can use the pos terminal you can do bank transfer to the following account numbers zenith bank 101 221 2489 fcmb 
357217012 FCMB 357217029 Account name is RCCG National Headquarters You can also supply materials or signage adverts You can join the Partner 75 from Group 1 to Group 8 or more Depending on how God has blessed you Pray for us for 75 minutes a month or more To lend a helping hand, please meet any Team Nehemiah member Or visit any of the Team Nehemiah stands For further information and inquiries, please call 070-89120-800. God bless you as you keep giving. Good morning, church. Shall we please rise to our feet as we take the redeemed anthem? Redeemed, united in love. Jesus is for us. We shall conquer. We are together. United in love. Jesus is for us. We shall conquer. We are victorious. and him. Our hymn from our hymn book is hymn number 21 on page 9. Hymn 21 on page 9. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. The choir will lead us.
grace will not depart from your mouth in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please take your seats as we listen to the choir.
Thank you, Father. Let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless his holy name. Let's give him all glory and honor because he's worthy. It's worthy to be praised. Let's bless him for everything he has done since the beginning of the year. Worship him for what he did for you in January. Give him glory for what he did in February. Magnify his holy name because he reigns forever. There's no one like him. All power belongs to him. Continue to give him glory and honor for what he's done for you, for what he's done for your family, for what he's done for the church of God. Magnify his holy name because he has surrounded you on all sides, protecting you from evil, from evil known and evil unknown, protecting you from enemies within and enemies without. Bless his holy name. Give him glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. And let's lift our voices to the Almighty God and ask him that today, in a very special way, he will visit all fathers and anoint them heavily so that they will be able to perform the roles of a father. Now, the father who is supposed to be the head of the family will be head indeed. And the Almighty God will supply them with everything they need so that they will be able to fulfill the roles of a father. Pray that our Father, all the fathers, young and old, will be good examples to their children, that they will be good representatives of the Most High God. Let's pray for every one of them. Pray for every father today. And then pray for every mothers, because there can be no fathers except there are mothers. So pray that the Almighty God will take care of all the mothers, that he will anoint them to be very good helpmates for all their husbands. And then pray for all those who are fathers-to-be, those who are trusting God for wives so that they too can become fathers. Pray for them that they will not marry the wrong person. That in all our homes, it will all be heaven on earth. Pray for all fathers to be. And then cry unto the Almighty God for a very special blessing for this month of March. That this month will be a month of mighty testimonies in your life. Talk to him now, because he answers prayers. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Ancient of days, we just want to bless your holy name. We thank you for everything you've done for us since the beginning of the year. Thank you for protection. Thank you for building a wall of fire around about us, around about our family, around about your church. Thank you for a new beginning, a new month in this new year. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, today we are praying for all fathers. Bless our fathers. Bless those who are already fathers. And bless them. particularly those who have been faithful. In the payment of their tithes and in the giving of their offerings, Father, this month, embarrass them with your blessing. Bless them so much that they will say, Father, this is becoming too much. Lord, let this month be a month of mighty breakthroughs for every one of us. And Lord God Almighty, we pray that we will keep on having mercy on our blessed nation, Nigeria. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I let someone shout hallelujah. And shake hands with one or two people and tell them, good morning, God bless you. Special anointing for success for you this year and this month in particular, in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Now today, we'll be talking briefly on divine champion. And while you are opening your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 45 to 51, 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 51, uh, let me explain the reason you, you are not seeing me at the headquarters, that I'm talking to you from the studio of Dove Media. It is because I know that this particular Sunday, I will already be in my prayer room, waiting on God for the special Holy Ghost service. In talking about the special Holy Ghost service, I want you to know that this year's special Holy Ghost service is going to be heaven on earth. Three days of heaven on earth. The theme, of course, as you know, is let there be light, part three. And so in order that you don't miss out on this Sunday, that's why I've decided I will pre-record this sermon so that we can still reach out to you this Sunday. For Samuel chapter 17, from verse 45 to 51, talking on divine champion. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of Philistines, of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it shall come to pass, and it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence his stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Today, in the name that's above every other name, the champion of your enemies will die. Now we have two words, divine champion. So for purposes of definition, what do we mean by divine? What do we mean by champion? Divine, of course, simply in the simplest possible way means pertaining to God Almighty. You can check that from 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4. 2 Peter 1 from verse 2 to 4. Things pertaining to God Almighty is what we call divine. That's one is simple. Champion means representative in a contest or battle, representative of a people. It could be representative of a nation in a contest or in a battle. For example, in the case of Goliath that we have read about here, if you read it from 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 1 to 10, 1 Samuel 17 from verse 1 to 10, you will discover that the Bible says, Goliath was the champion of the Philistines. 
And he, when he was talking to the children of Israel, he said, listen, I am the champion of the Philistines. Let the children of Israel produce their own champion so we can fight together. Now, when your champion wins, you win. In other words, if your champion, the one representing you or representing your family or representing your nation, if he wins, hey, you have all won. If he loses, you have all lost. It's like when, uh, for example, we, the uh, Green Eagles go out to represent Nigeria. If they win, Nigeria has won. If they lose, God have mercy on us. Now, so a champion is a representative, representing a family, representing a church, representing a nation, etc., etc. Now, of course, when we also say a champion, a champion is the one who remains standing when the battle is over. Particularly like in boxing. If you are boxing, you put one man against another. One is probably representing Nigeria. The other is representing another nation. At the end of the battle, at the end of the contest, one is knocked out. The champion is the one standing. In 4 Samuel chapter 17, verse 51, 4 Samuel 17, verse 51, you will find that when Goliath fell, one thing that David did was he stood on him to let everybody know, here comes the real champion. And so when we now combine the two words, divine champion, we are talking about the possibility of someone who is a representative of God. God's champion, divine champion. For example, in 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 21 to 24, 1 Kings 18 from verse 21 to 24, Elijah stood on Mount Carmel and said, I am representing God. All these other people, the prophets of Baal, they are representing Baal. So uh, he was saying, I am the divine champion. On the other hand, a divine champion could be someone who is a champion because he has the backing of God. The one who is supported by God. Champion because of divine enablement. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, if you read it from verse 45 to 47, 4 Samuel 17 uh, from verse 45 to 47, David said to Goliath, I come against thee in the name of the God of Israel. I'm representing God. The reason I'm going to win is because he's going to give me the enablement. As a matter of fact, if you read the entire story of 1 um, Samuel chapter 17 from the beginning to the end, you will find that even though two people met to fight, even though two people, one says he's a champion of the Philistines, the other one says he's championing the cause of Israel, the battle is actually between the God of Israel and the gods of the Philistines. Because Goliath said to David when he was coming towards him, he said, I swear by my gods, I will deal with you. And David said, I come in the name of my God. Now, in contest, if we are talking about football or boxing, etc., etc., et or uh, anything, any, any game like that, there are three possibilities. There could be a winner, there could be a loser, or we could have a drunk game. I mean, for example, in boxing, they could say that, oh, you, the number of blows A landed is equal to the number of blows that B landed, therefore the whole thing is a drunk game. Or in football, you could play 
and uh, this side will score three goals, the other side will score three goals, and we say the game is a draw. But in battle, in war, there are only two possibilities. You either win or you lose. And in war, winner takes all. It's not a question of, uh, uh, all right, like in boxing, for instance, uh, we, we agree that, all right, the champion will get uh, two million naira, and uh, the one who loses will go home with uh, 500,000. No, no, no. In war, it is winner takes all. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 8 to 10, 1 Samuel 17, verse 8 to 10, Goliath said, if I win, Israel will become our slaves. If I lose, then the Philistines will become the slaves of the children of Israel. There's no halfway. Now, I have told you again and again that life is war. So it's either you win or you lose. And I pray in the name that's above every other name, you will never be a loser. Because if you lose, you lose all. I mean, for example, in, in, in war, when there is someone who is a loser, it's either he ends up dead or he ends up captive. For example, Judges 16 from verse 18 to 30. Judges 16, verse 18 to 30. When Samson lost, to the Philistines, you know the story very well. Not only did they pluck out his eyes, they bound him, took him into prison, and he was in servitude until he died. That's why I'm praying once again for every one of you who are true children of the living God, you will never lose another battle in Jesus' name. Now, if you're a child of God, you're already a champion. You are a champion because the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are a champion because the word of God says you are more than a conqueror because God loves you. And so you are not allowed to lose to sickness. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, 1 Peter 2, verse 24, by his stripes you were healed. So you can tell that sickness in your body, you get out because I am a champion. You are not allowed to lose to demons because according to John chapter 8, verses 32 and 36, John 8, 32 and 36, the Bible says, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And you already know Jesus. And in verse 36, he says, whomsoever the Son shall set free is free indeed. So you, you are not allowed to lose to bondage. So you can tell any demon that is terrorizing you, you get away from here because I am a divine champion. You are not even allowed to lose to poverty. Because according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, Philippians 4, 19, all your needs are met. God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So you may as well tell poverty, bye-bye. You have to pack your load and go because I'm a divine champion. But even on a deeper note, you are not just a divine champion. You have to show it. You have to demonstrate it that you are a champion. For example, in Mark chapter 16, if you read from verse 17 to 18, <coughs> excuse me, Mark 16 from verse 17 to 18, the Bible says you are to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You are to demonstrate your championship over sickness. In other words, not only are you to be healthy, you are to make the sick whole. For example, in Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, verse 1 to 8, when Peter saw that lame man by the beautiful gate, and he was asking for arms, he said, listen, I have something far, far superior to what you are asking for. 
Money is not what I want to give you. I want to give you something that will make sure you don't beg again. He laid hands on him and he began to walk. I'm decreeing today that every one of you are my children. From today onward, when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. I mean, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Reminds me of what happened the first time I visited Zambia. I've told you the story before. I had something that didn't quite agree with me. I think I've been going to the toilet about 24 times that night before I remembered that I, it is written, I will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. And the Bible didn't say who the sick will be. Now I'm the one who is sick now. So I lay my own hand on my own head and I commanded my stomach to obey the word of God. And the stooling stopped. So from now on, you go out and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And it might be a good idea if you lay the hand on your own head right away and say to yourself, I decree in the name that's above every other name, according to the word of God, every sickness in my body, get out now. You are supposed to demonstrate your championship over demons because you are asked to cast them out. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name as my champion. They will cast out devils. And you see an example in Acts 16, from verse 16 to 18. Acts 16, from verse 16 to 18. The Bible tells us that there was this uh, girl with the spirit of divination that was uh, troubling uh, Paul and Silas as they were going uh, to the temple. And Paul turned around when he, he could no longer tolerate what was going on and commanded the demons to get out. And the Bible said the demon left that same hour. You are a divine champion. You are not asked to spend a whole night casting out one demon. Just command. Oh, suppose I ask the demon to leave and he doesn't leave. Who told you it won't leave? If you're a true child of God, you tell the demon to leave, it will leave. When you spend time waiting for the demon to leave, you will know that you don't even know who you are, that you don't believe what you are saying. You command and leave the rest to the Almighty God and He will perfect it. Remember the, the story of the woman who, uh, I think it was when we were in Elori, the service was on. And all of a sudden, I saw commotion in the congregation, and I saw a woman running out. And I saw these ushers following her. After the service, I said, what happened? And they brought the woman. And the woman said, as we were preaching, her dress caught fire. Uh, your dress caught fire? What, what, what does that mean? We say the dress practically caught fire. And then she told us her story that uh, her children were dying, so she wanted uh, protection for her children, and then went to one Aladura fellow, and uh, the Aladura fellow was busy when she got there, and the wife of the uh, Aladura man said, uh, you don't have to wait for my husband, just take this cola nut and eat it, and your children won't die anymore. She had the cola nut and then discovered from that night she began to fly in the night to attend meetings. And she discovered that when they got to the meetings, they were sharing human flesh. Very soon it was her turn to present somebody. And they asked her to present her husband. So she presented the husband, the husband died. And about two years later, it was her turn again. And now they asked for one of the children. She said, at that stage, she said, uh-uh. It was these children I wanted to protect that got me into this trouble. And then she began to look for help, how she could get out. She said, I've been going from place to place till I got here. And today, my dress caught fire. I said, glory be to God, you've got to where you will be set free. We prayed a simple prayer. She went home and went to ease herself in her toilet. And it was this uh, pit latrine kind of thing. And because of the kind of situation in the pit latrine, she spread some piece of paper on the floor, 
to ease herself before throwing the thing in. And then out of her came a dead snake. Today, every demon in you, every plan that God has not planted in you, I command that thing will die and it will come out in Jesus' name. Not only that, from today, you will go out and begin to cast out demons and they will obey you in Jesus' name. You must demonstrate that you are a divine champion by challenging the devil himself. Because he says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. They will take up serpents. The word take up serpents, they are mean they will challenge the one who is called the serpent. You will challenge the devil himself. And the devil, whether he likes it or not, will have to obey your instructions because it is written in James chapter 4, verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, if you submit to God, you will resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You have the power to tell the devil, I am a divine champion. You have to do what I say. Uh, the Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 7, you submit to God, you resist the devil. Call the devil. If he wants to fight, let him come. And you deal with the devil. I remember very well when we first came to Redemption Camp and we were clearing the bush. And I was going around one day and, and, I, and I saw something strange happening. There was this tree and all of a sudden I saw fire on top of the tree. It was in the night, so I thought, oh, maybe my children, while we were getting ready, lit a fire under the tree and forgot to put the fire out. And when the morning came, I looked, and there was no trace of fire. The tree was as green as ever. I, I know what I saw. I wasn't dreaming. It wasn't a vision. It was something naked that I saw. So I called the people in the camp. What's going on? This is what I saw in the night. They said, we were afraid to tell you. Afraid to tell me what? And they said, we have been hearing voices in the tree. Oh. One of them even said, we had them pounding yam inside the tree. <laughs> I said, well, this camp now belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't share it with any tree that is uh, having people talking within. So I said, they should cut it down. Within five minutes of the boys beginning to call the tree, all the villagers gathered as if by a miracle. What are you doing? Why are you trying to cut down this tree? Don't you? I said, well, so what is, what's the problem? It's a tree now. We've already bought the place. Uh, if we cut down the tree, before tomorrow morning, the tree will rise again. And all of you who did the cutting down, you will all be dead. So the children came to me and said, what are we going to cut the yeye thing down? If the tree rises by tomorrow, then I will be worshiping the tree. But if my father is still the Lord of hosts, the tree will never rise. That was 1983. The tree never rose. And those who cut down, <laughs> down the tree are still alive and well. Go out and be a champion because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But you cannot go on challenging the devil, challenging demons, commanding sickness, unless you belong to Jesus Christ yourself. Because in Acts chapter 19, if you read it from verse 11 to 17, Acts 19 from verse 11 to 17, some people saw Paul casting out demons, even with his handkerchiefs. And they say, oh, we know what he does. He will simply say in the name of Jesus and these miracles will happen. So let us do the same. And some of them, seven of them, went to one madman by the roadside and said, we combine you in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Get out of this man. <laughs> the devil said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? The Bible tells us that the, the demon in that man beat them and tore their clothes and they fled through the window. You don't fight your master. If the devil is your master, please don't go and begin to command him to leave. If you do, he will beat you up. 
he will tear your dress, or he may even leave the fellow he is in and transfer into you. But if you come to Jesus Christ today, he will receive you. He will wash you clean with his blood. And if the devil sees that you are already washed in the blood of the lamb, he will know that he can't come near you. Because the Bible said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So if you are listening to me today and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, one great reason why you should do so is that by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ, you become a divine champion. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you better come now. And I'm going to count speedily from one to seven. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you better rush forward now as I'm beginning to count. One. Two. The choice is yours. If you like, you can remain a slave to Satan. You can remain a slave to sickness. You can remain a slave to bondage. Or you can decide that today I want to be free. I want to become a divine champion. Then you come and let Jesus Christ save your soul. Three. Four. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. The Lord is waiting for you. This can be the greatest day of your life. Five. And now six. Good. And those of you already in front and those of you on the way, cry to the Lord now and ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to please save your soul. Ask him to wash you in his blood. Ask him to receive you into the family of God. And ask him to turn you to a divine champion. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them that the almighty God who has saved our souls will save their own souls also. Let's pray for them for another one minute. Intercede for them. And those of you on the way, keep coming. You are not late yet. I'm yet to pray. But make sure you get here before I finish praying for salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, my Father and my God, we want to bless your holy name. We want to give you all glory. We want to give you all honor for sending your word to your people today. And thank you for all these people that have responded to your word and have come to surrender their life to you. Thank you for these people who are saying, we don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore. We now want to spend our life doing the will of God. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Please, Lord God Almighty, save their souls. Write their names in the book of life. Receive them into the family of God. So that from now on, when they receive the devil, the devil will flee from them. And I pray that you uphold them to the very end. So that in your kingdom, we'll all be there to reign with you. And please, Lord God Almighty, the children will be praying now, and as they pray, please answer them by fire. Turn each and every one of them to champions today, your champions, so that for the rest of their lives, they will never suffer another loss. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And I'm rejoicing with those of you who have come to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. I can assure you that by the grace of God from now on, I'll be praying for you. So the counselors will attend to you. They will give you cards in which you will give me your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. God bless you. And the rest of us now will stand on our feet as bold as a lion, divine champions indeed. And lift our voices to the Almighty God and command everything that is not of God in our lives to disappear. Sickness, disease, poverty, bondage. Tell all those things. I am a champion of the Most High God. I come against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and you must leave me alone now. Let's go ahead and call on the Almighty God. And he will answer you by fire. In Jesus' name. Lift up your voice to him and command 
pray as a champion. Lift up your voice and say, in the mighty name of Jesus, sickness in my body, what are you waiting for? Get out. Lift up your voice and talk to God. Poverty, I command you, get out of my life. I am a champion. Let God hear your voice this morning. Let God hear your voice this morning. Mali prakasa todo kore makashin de kepori akashata. In prokoso todo leba rima kakarima kroko shin de kere abakashanta. Oh, poverty, jump out of my life. Sickness, jump out of my body. Rike parama katando koromo koso todo kore akashata. In prakata dalia borima skato dole barusko todo lea. Marike pokoromo kotondo korima kaskata dalia. Stagnation, what are you waiting for? Get out of my life. Retrogression, get out of my life. Lift up your voice. Marika poso todo lea. Marika parama katando koromo koso todo korea. E prakata da kaparima skato dole barus kataya. In prokoso todo lea bashata. Lift up your voice to God and let God hear your voice and shout every Goliath in my life. Every Goliath terrorizing my destiny. What are you waiting for? Lose your head. Lose your hole. Go ahead and talk to God. Rapoch daya. Marakata kapakurima kasatodolea. Imprakata kapalabarama kashakatayaba. Marikete de Kepokoromo Kosoto de Korea. E Praka Parima Kosoto Dolea. Oh, Lepo Popo Shin de Keporomo Kosoto Dolea. Marake da Porimas Catadalia. Mayeke de Kepokoromo Kosoto Dolea. Oh, Lepra Casataya Bashata. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You pray two more prayers. Join your hand with somebody by your side that can pray for you and say, Father, loud and clear, say, My Father, I exercise my authority as a divine champion. Sickness in the body of my friends. What are you waiting for? Get out! Yes, out, out, out. Aha. Le prakata da bakarimas kanto dolea. Ma yege de bokoromo kosoto dolea. Eh, le bobo bo shike boromo kosoto dolea. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to lift up your voice and be a prophet to the fellow you are holding. Say, in the mighty name of Jesus, I exercise my authority. Sealed by the blood of the Lamb. As a divine champion, I prophesy to you today, no more sickness, no more poverty, no more delay, no more embargo in your life. In the name of Jesus, go ahead. I exercise my authority. Sealed by the blood of the Lamb. As a divine champion of the Most High, I decree and declare in your life no more sickness, no more poverty, no more delay, no more stagnation, no more oppression. In Prakata Kabarama Kashatayaba. Rike Porumo Kosoto Dolia. In Prakata Dabarama Shatayaba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please listen to me. Our Father and the Lord will turn 78 tomorrow. Hallelujah. Can you please join your faith with man and say, Father, 
loud and clear say, Father, we commit our Father in the Lord into your hand. As he turns 78 tomorrow, you will renew his strength. You will empower him the more. Oh, you go ahead and pray for him. His strength will never be abated. In Prakasoto do Lebarus Katayaba. Mariske Teke Pokorumoko Shindayaba. Lord, renew your grace. Renew your power. Renew your anointing upon his life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rekapasuto do Leyabasuto do Lea. In the